Hi everybody, this is Felix Kao, a biomedical engineer from GE Research. In this presentation, I would like to report our progress on pulmonary ventilation and post perfusion imaging on premature neonates, pediatric patients, and adult ICU patients using our simultaneous multiple source EIT prototype system. This project is supported by Forge Lab in 2020. Unlike other traditional EIT systems with a single current source and a multiplexer switch between electrodes, our system is a multiple source system which allows us to apply excitation current patterns more uniformly into the region that we want to detect. For example, we can design a current pattern as shown on the right figure to force the current with different amplitudes on each electrode so that current density can pass through uniformly from the left side to the right side. The figures on the left are our two types of prototype systems, with unique multiple independent current sources design. We can apply kinetical trigonometric current patterns, such as cosine theta, cosine 2 theta, and cosine 8 theta, sine theta, sine 2 theta, and to sine 7 theta, and measure the corresponding voltages for each pattern simultaneously. Here are examples for the cosine theta, cosine 4 theta, and the cosine 8 theta current patterns. As you can see from the slide, different current patterns has different sensitivities to the impedance change in the different regions. Therefore, we can reconstruct the impedance imaging with the information such as applied current patterns, corresponding voltage measurements, electrolocation, and the geometry of the testing region. Fine nickel subjects under continuous positive airway pressure treatments were enrolled in an IRB approved protocol at the Columbia University RV Medical Center. The changes in ventilation and perfusion with CPAP on and off were studied. Here is the information of these fine nickel subjects. These premature neonates were less than two weeks old with a tiny chest circumference, high heart rate, and a fast respiration rate. During the study, 16 electrodes were placed with equal spacing around the subject's chest and a reference ground electrode was placed on the belly. Continuous impedance measurements were obtained for 10 to 11 minutes in each subject. A traditional 2D linear reconstruction algorithm was used to reconstruct the conductivity distribution and a smooth filter was used to reduce the grid of the reconstructed mesh for image display. 490 meshes were used for reconstructing the 2D imaging shown in the bottom figure. The reconstructed image was arranged in a standard DICOM format as shown in the middle figure. The reconstructed value of these meshes are selected to represent the heart and lung regions to demonstrate the conductivity changes for further waveform analysis. We use the power waveform to describe the general view of the pulmonary activity. The power waveform of the impedance measure was computed as a summation of the first cosine pattern as shown in the left figure, multiplied with the corresponding voltage in real part. The power is increased at the inhale phase and decreased at the exhale phase. Here is the power waveform from the test subject with the 5 minutes of CPAP on and 5 minutes of CPAP off. During the impedance data collection on these 5 CPAP neonates, rapid shallow breathing and the periodic breathing pause in the power waveform were observed as shown on the figure. Similar findings with different breathing patterns has been reported in the literature too. Here are the continuous time series video for reconstructive ventilation images and post perfusion images. The lab video is a 7 second impedance measurement for ventilation images. The right video is a 3 second impedance measurement for post perfusion image during the natural breathing pause. The reconstructive ventilation images, a clear ventilation on both lungs are detected and the reconstructed conductivity values are displayed at the bottom. The blue curve represents ventilation in the left lung and the green curve represents the right lung. The moving dots on the waveforms represent the reconstruction data frame. 
In the reconstructed conductive images, the conductivity value is decreased at the inhale phase and increased at the exhale phase. On the reconstructed post-tile perfusion images, the red color represents the increase of the conductivity values which indicate the blood perfusion. From the video, we can see the blood distributed from the heart to the lungs at systolic phase, and the blood goes back from the lungs to the heart at the diastolic phase. On the bottom, the time series waveforms of the reconstructed values are displayed. The red curve represents the conductivity changes at the heart region, and the blue curve is for left lung region, and the green curve is for the right lung. Let us watch the ventilation video and post tile perfusion videos again. The post tile perfusion data was captured during normal breathing pulses, and the no selling contract was used given the unique sensitivity of the simultaneous multiple source EIT approach. For further analysis, we plotted the frame by frame conductivity changes for one breathing cycle in the same color scale. The time series of the conductivity values for the right and left lungs are shown at the bottom figure. In this frame-by-frame -frame analysis, we also detect the increasing of the venous return during the inhale breathing cycle, which increases the conductivity values in the heart region. These are the reconstructed conductivity images during the nature breathing pause to demonstrate the post perfusion changes in the lung region in a same color scale. The time series of conductivity values from the heart and lungs are shown at the bottom. From the frame-by-frame -frame analysis, we can see the conductivity value at heart region starts decreasing at systolic phase, and the conductivity value at lung regions are increasing. At the diastolic phase, the conductivity value at lung regions are decreasing, and the value at heart region is increasing. Here are the reconstructed images of regional post perfusion at the end of the systolic phase obtained from these five subjects. The ratio of the maximal conductivity change in the heart region to that of the lung region was roughly 2.2 for all five subjects. We also derive impedance parameters to represent the global impedance change of minutes of ventilation, marked as RZ, and the global impedance change of minutes post perfusion, marked as CZ. The derived impedance parameters and the hemoglobin oxygen saturation measurements, SpO2, are plotted in the right figure, and the detailed measurements are listed in the table. The result shows the CPAP of 5 cm water pressure significantly improves ventilation and oxygenation, with no change in minutes perfusion in preterm infants. We also collected several pediatric patients with spinal muscular atrophy type 1. Spinal muscular atrophy, SMA, is a genetic disease affecting the central nervous system, peripheral nervous system, and voluntary muscle movement. SMA is the most common genetic cause of mortality in infants. The progressive decline of lungs functionalities is the most important cause of mortality in these patients. Unfortunately, the assessment and the evaluation of lung function in children aged 1 to 5 years has been neglected for a long time because the difficulty to perform forced expiratory maneuvers through the breathing tube. Therefore, non-invasive EIT lung function monitoring might be able to solve this unmet need. There is an information of evaluated pediatric patients in this preliminary feasibility study. EIT derived power waveforms shows the inhale and exhale movements clearly. When subject breathes in, the air goes in the lungs region and increases the impedance in the chest region. Therefore, the power measurements are increased during the inhale phase, and vice versa, the power waveform dropping when subject breathes out. Breathing pauses could be found between each breath. They are about 2 to 3 seconds, which contains clear pulsatile signals with small perturbations marked in the red circles. With further signal processing, we would be able to reconstruct this pulsatile perfusion signal in the next slide.
This reconstructive ventilation and post-tire perfusion data was obtained from a 5-year-old SMA Taiwan patient in a supine position. 32 electrodes were placed on the chest with two ring configuration. Each electrode ring contains 16 electrodes with equal spacing arranged around the chest. The top electrode ring is just under the armpit at third and fourth intercostal space above the nipple line. The bottom electrode ring is at fifth or sixth intercostal space beneath the nipple line above the xiphoid. The X-ray image is also shown in the slide. The dashed line represents the location of the electrode ring. We extract the three breathing cycles and the three heartbeat cycles to demonstrate the EIT reconstructed ventilation and post-tire perfusion images in the video. Due to the supine position, the ventral side is more pronounced than the dorsal side. This is what we expect. The interesting thing is that left side is more pronounced than the right side in the ventilation image in this subject. We double check with the clinician and found the left lung was better developed than the right lung on the X-ray images start from two years ago. Here are the reconstructed peristyle perfusion images. The displaying speed was adjusted to three times slower to view the heartbeat cycle more clearly. As you can see from the video, the clear systolic phase and diastolic phase in the heart region and lung regions are presented in the perfusion images. The perfusion image on the left side are also more pronounced than the right side. Here are another two representative examples of the EIT ventilation and post perfusion images along with CT images with different lung diseases. The data was collected at ICU of Columbia University Medical Center in New York City. Subject PT04 on the top row shows moderate pulmonary edema and effusion on the right dorsal lung, which shift the majority ventilation to the ventral side, as indicated by the blue arrows. This reduced ventilation leads to the physical shunt in the right dorsal region of the right lung, as detected by our EIT post-style perfusion images, showing the strong conductivity increase in the location, show as red arrow. Subject P05 on the bottom row had a left transplant lung rejection, and as shown in the CT images, a hyper-expanded right lung. The patient's heart and mediastinum are also moderate shift to the left side. Corresponding our ventilation image shows the conductivity signal change predominantly on the right side, with a little to no changes on the left. Our perfusion image shows the conductivity signal change is predominantly on the right ventral side. In both cases, our reconstruction agrees with the finding from the CD report. We demonstrate a feasibility study with frame-by-frame -frame ventilation and post perfusion images for premature neonates in ICU and the pediatric patients and adult patients in the ICU using our simultaneous multiple source EIT protocol system without any contrast agent or averaging the signal during the cardiac cycles. The regional post perfusion signal and images were reconstructed when impedance measurements are available during the nature breathing process. The simultaneous multiple source EIT system can clearly monitor the lung ventilation and post perfusion non-invasively in spontaneous breathing preterm infant both on and off CCAP and has the potential for the clinical application. This project is supported by NIH funding from 2011 to 2016 and GE internal funding in 2020 to develop our unique simultaneous multiple source EIT technology. We thank our collaborators from Columbia University in New York City, Colorado State University, and the Children's Hospital in Colorado, and the professors from RPI for their assessment and guidance. If you are interested in our project or other results, please feel free to contact with us and visit our project website. Here are the contact information and the link to our project website. Thank you. Here is the publication of this project. Thank you for your lesson.